Hello everyone, we are on our fourth week for the fourth quarter and we are going to talk about biodiversity. So the objectives are as follows. First, describe the concept of species. Second, identify the levels of biodiversity as the basis for classifying organisms. Third, identify the different levels in the hierarchical taxonomic system of classification and make a concept map to classify organisms using the hierarchical system. So our lesson will be about the species and taxonomic system of classification. So before we start with the discussion, here is a short activity in which you are going to complete the table by putting the organisms into their correct habitat. Alright, so pause this video and then come back once you're done to see if you got the correct answers. Alright, here are the correct answers. Kindly check your own work. I hope you were able to get them correctly. So let's begin our discussion with the concept of the species. Kapag sinabi natin species, ano bang ibig sabihin nun? Species is commonly defined as a group of similar organisms living in a particular area and can reproduce their own kind. So tatandaan yun, similar organisms. And the most important thing is that they can reproduce their own kind. Ibig sabihin, pwede silang magkaroon ng mga offspring or mga anak. Talking about species, there are different concepts about them. First one is biological species. This means that even though organisms look alike or they have similarities, it is very possible that they do not belong to the same species. Why? Because they cannot reproduce. So, hindi ibig sabihin na parehas silang ibon ay pwede na silang makabuo ng kanilang offspring. Kagaya ng nasa example on this diagram. So, in this diagram, they look the same. However, they cannot interbreed. Hindi sila nakakapag-reproduce kasi may kanya-kanyang way of mating yung mga birds na ito using their particular songs. Okay? Then, we also have lineage species. So, kapag sinabi naman natin lineage species, ang ibig sabihin lang nito ay meron tayong pinagmulan or meron tayong kanununuan and eventually after several times or several, several years, nagkakaroon ng evolution. Kaya nag-branch out from one ancestor to different organisms but they are belonging to the same species. Then, we have morphological species. When we talk about morphology, it refers to the form or itura and also anatomy, such as these organisms. They might look different, but they might belong or they might be the same species. Alright, so biodiversity. When we say biodiversity, the simplest uh, definition for this is the variety of life on Earth. Ibig sabihin, iba't ibang uri ng organisms na matatagpuan natin sa Earth. Alright? So, when we say organisms, these are, of course, living things. Now, there are three levels of biodiversity and we'll begin with genetic diversity. Last week, I think we discussed about genes, genotype, and phenotype. So, when we say genetic diversity, this is the total number of genetic characteristics or the genetic makeup of a species or the genotype of a species. Next up, we have ecosystem diversity. So, this one is in a broader area. This is the variation or differences in the ecosystems found in a particular region or over the planet, such as underwater ecosystem and we have land ecosystem then the last one is species diversity this is just the same as what i have been saying about species this consists of a large number and all of the different kinds shapes colors and sizes of organisms that we can find on earth next up classifying and naming organisms so i have here a question or a particular situation and then you think about it. For example, inus inutusan ka ng nanay mo na mag-grocery and then pagpunta mo dun sa grocery, nagulat ka na lang kasi yung mga items ay hindi magkakasama yung mga magkakatulad. So let's say sabon, ang katabi niya ay bagoong, tapos may suka, tapos yung shampoo nandun dun sa kabilang aisle and others. What would you feel? Or what could possibly happen? Of course, aabutin ka ng napakatagal sa pag-grocery mo, right? 
So there is really a need for classifying things around us and also for classifying organisms. All right. So biologists have organized living things with similarities into groups so that the organisms are easier to study. So grupo na ng mga biologists and scientists or taxonomists para mas madali silang mapag-aralan. And that process is known as classification. Kayo sa bahay nyo, I'm very sure that you are also doing classification. Okay, so look at this. Nagtanong yung... Ungoy, what's your name? And the giraffe answered, common name or scientific name. Wow, may iba't ibang klase palang name. Later on, we'll see the difference between a common name and a scientific name. Alright, so for naming organisms, it was Carl von Linné who devised a system for naming organisms. So, ang ginawa ni Linnaeus ay, grimo po niya yung organisms based on their observable features. And each organism has a unique two-part scientific name and it was called binomial nomenclature or binomial system of naming organisms ibig sabihin ng bi alawa and the nomial name so this is two name for organisms and this is Linne or Linnaeus so, for any organism identified, there is a scientific name given. And the scientific name, yung mahirap i-pronounce, that is actually in Latin. Kaya medyo nahihirapan tayong i-pronounce yun. Then, ano yung bumubuo sa dalawang pangalan na nasa scientific name? We have genus and species. Okay? So, it is in Latin and if it is written, it should be italicized. So, let's see some examples of scientific names. All right. So, this one is actually a rose. Common name is rose. However, there are different species of rose. And this one is Rosa Indica. That's its scientific name. Another one. So, we have here short beak common dolphin. Scientific name is Delphinus delphis. And we have long beak common dolphin with the scientific name Delphinus capensis. Alright. So, ang common name nila, dolphin. Then we have here a cat. How do we classify a cat? So, alam lang natin ay pusa, pusa, cat, cat, di ba? But actually, the scientific name of a cat is Felis catus. So, look at the lower part of this text. Dun sa pinakababa, genus is Felis and species is catus. So, pag pinagsama natin yung genus and the species, we will get the scientific name which is Felis catus. Now, how do we classify? There are actually different levels for classifying organisms. So, for example, here we have a human and a corn. So, titignan nyo lang yung category. So, category, meron tayong um, different categories. Yung pinakataas and yung pinakamalaking categories. And as you go down, mas nagiging konti yung organisms, pero mas nagiging specific or mas nagkakaroon sila ng maraming similarities. Again, Kapag mas nasa taas, mas maraming organisms, pero mas maraming differences yung organisms. And as you go down the levels or the, the categories, nagiging mas konting organisms, pero mas marami na silang similarities. So, we start with domain, pababa, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. If we are going to begin naman sa baba, group of similar species ay bubuo ng genus. Tapos, yung mga genus na yan form into family and so on and so forth. Okay. So, organisms. Ayan na nga. As I have mentioned, these are ranked from largest to smallest. So, pakitandaan to class. Ha, importante to. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Alin nga ulit dyan yung may pinakamaraming organisms? Correct. Domain. And alin naman dyan yung pinakamaraming similarities? Okay. Species. Next, domains and kingdoms. So, here is a diagram that shows how organisms are classified. So, basically, there are three domains and six kingdoms. Yan. So, ano yung tatlong domains or the broadest groups? We have Archaea, 
eukarya and bacteria. So let's discuss first archaea and bacteria. Kasi yung archaea at saka bacteria, parehas lang yan ng mga bacteria but there are some differences kaya pinaghiwalay sila. When we say archaea, these are organisms that live in extreme environments. Okay? So merong isang kingdom na under archaea. That is kingdom archaea bacteria. And the characteristic of these or- organisms or bacteria is that They live in extreme environments such as sobrang init na environment, sobrang lamig na environment, sobrang salty environment, or even environments with very less oxygen. And then on the other side, we have kingdom bacteria. Ito naman ay belonging to the domain. Oh, uh, sorry, I mean kingdom U bacteria belonging to domain bacteria. And these are the ordinary bacteria. Okay, yung mga bacteria matatagpuan sa bahay and other places. Now, when we say kingdom eukarya, these are organisms which are eukaryotes. Pag sinabi natin eukaryotes, meron silang nucleus. Mostly, they are multicellular. Maraming cells. They are autotrophs. Pwede makagawa ng sarili yung pagkain nila. Or they might be, they may be heterotrophs. Ibig sabihin, kailangang kumain para mabuhay. So, for eukarya, there are four kingdoms. We have the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, the fungi, and the protist. Okay? So, let's look into the other characteristics of the different domains. So, for archaea domain, ayan, so as I have mentioned, they often live in extreme environments. For bacteria domain, these are found everywhere. Then, for prokaryotes, pag sinabi natin prokaryotes, organisms with no nucleus, eukaryotes, organisms with nucleus, autotrophs, organisms that can make their own food, heterotrophs, organisms that cannot make their own food, unicellular, ibig sabihin, single-celled or isang cell lang ang meron siya, and multicellular, more than one cell. So, for your sit work, I want you to... Complete this inverted pyramid by listing down the levels of classification of organisms from largest to smallest category. So this will be for 10 points. That's part 1. And for part 2, you just complete the graph about the taxonomic system of classification of organisms. You may go back to the video so that you can answer this map. Alright, so that's it for today. Thank you. Have a nice week.